Today I'm going to talk a little bit about different input method editors for Windows 10 or 11. Uh, these input method editors are basically ways to type things in on your computer. and These are all options for Chinese. So on my computer I have three different Chinese input method editors and one English one. Uh, and if you are a native English speaker like me, you probably have English going right now and have potentially installed one of these other three in the process of studying Chinese. So we'll start by looking at the default one, the Microsoft Pinion Editor. So this one works fine. It's, it's got a few things that I'm not super excited about, and I'm going to basically show you why I don't use it. So all the normal stuff works. This isn't a Pinion how-to video. This is just a which Pinion do I like better video. So let's look at... Um, so still, you can, like pretty much any editor out there on Windows, Android, Mac, iOS, you type a string of Pinion, you use the numbers to select what you want, and you get the characters. It's lovely. It's wonderful. It's beautiful. I have run into issues on occasion where if I run out of room in the window or the page, the... Um, It'll, it'll stop giving me recommendations. I'm going to see if I can get it to happen. Okay, so today it likes me. No big deal. What really bugs me about this editor is that there's a keyboard shortcut for switching to English. And you can't turn it off. So here's... So basically, down here in the little bar here, you've got a little... Zhong character for Zhongguo or Zhongwen, and if you click it, you switch to English mode, which then dumps you back to just typing normal letters. Now, one might ask, why does one need an English mode within the Chinese editor when you can simply switch to English as a keyboard? And I will answer you, I have no idea. The only, the only use case I can think of is if you're a native Chinese speaker and you want to type in English without installing the English keyboard. But more or less, when you're in the Chinese keyboard here, there's always a keyboard shortcut to change this. So I think right now it's control space. Yeah, you see that control space changes ying for ingwen and zhong for zhongwen. Now, normally this wouldn't be such a big deal, except that for whatever reason, the way I type, I seem to accidentally hit this keyboard shortcut a lot. And so when I'm midstream typing Chinese, and if I accidentally hit that keyboard shortcut, it dumps all my Chinese as just letters, and it's gone. And so, like, for a short sentence like this, it's no big deal. But if I've typed a whole sentence or a whole bunch of stuff or there's some tricky characters in there or I don't remember or I just don't want it to do that to me, um, it's really annoying. And the trouble is there's no way to disable this keyboard shortcut. No matter what you do, you have to have a keyboard shortcut to switch from English to Chinese. And it's just a pain. If I want to type in English, I would go to the English editor. But no. So anyways, um, it's also, you can't configure pretty much anything about this editor. So like, um, if we put it back to the Microsoft one, and we switch to Chinese mode. Uh, right now, this font size doesn't bother me a bit because I've been typing Chinese for the better part of two and a half, three years now. So it's like, no big deal. The characters are small. I'm good friends with these characters. I know what they mean. I don't need them blown up super huge. But that was not the case a year, year and a half ago when I was still trying to make sure I knew what the characters were and didn't have them all as memorized as I do now by sight. Um, and there's no way to display these characters any bigger without making your entire desktop bigger. So if you want these characters bigger, then all these file buttons have to get bigger, and this notepad title bar has to get bigger, and all your eye context has to get bigger, and your taskbar has to get bigger, and pretty soon you feel like you're using a clown computer. And so that's, that's kind of the two chief annoyances for me with this keyboard. And it happened enough that I went on a perilous quest to find a better option, and that uh, I got two options out of it. Uh, let's see here. There's this guy, which is the goat, the greatest of all time. Now, right off the bat, there's a few key differences here. One of them is my options are vertical instead of horizontal, which I can configure. 
Horizontal, vertical options means, look at this, look at this whole sentence I can stick in here. Look at all this room. Um, now this is a definite difference between the two. So like, I have this one, I, can, I could select this one if I think that autocomplete is right, I could do all these. They all have space. And notice the size. These are a lot bigger. And notice the font. This is a much nicer font. Be and, and then notice the colors themselves. The tan background with the black characters is much, much easier on the eyes. And notice Panda from We Bear Bears. Goodness gracious me, does it get any better than this? I submit to you that it does not. Uh, so anyways, I can select some characters and I get them right there. Uh, and notice something else. This one also has a switch from Chinese to English. So I click this, it goes English or Chinese. But there's no keyboard shortcut set up because this one has a setting to turn that off. Now, if you're new to Chinese, this settings menu is going to uh, blow your brains a little bit. But it's worth the patience to figure it out. So this is the main screen here um, with some basic options. Simplified characters or complex characters. Um, sorry, that's the Chinese way of saying it. Simplified or traditional? Jian ti or the fan ti. How big do you want them? Um... Do you want Chinese or English mode for the default, I think? But the key feature here, let's see, where is it? If we click through a few of these. So go to the settings one. Look at this. So this is Zhong Ying Wen Chie Huan, which means keyboard, like Chinese, English, um, swap. You could make control, the shift the keyboard shortcut, control or nothing. Wu. This is the Chinese character meaning nothing. And because there's a nothing option, that means I can turn off a keyboard shortcut to switch to English, which means that I will never be midstream typing a long Chinese sentence at full speed and suddenly, and apparently out of nowhere, have it dump all of my Chinese characters into simple Roman letters. This, my friends, is worth the price of admission alone, and the price of admission is free. Uh, let's see what else. And then I turn this keyboard shortcut off too. I'm not really sure I remember what that does. These are search options. And then here is, let's see here. Um, I believe the t-shirt. This is where you can configure what it looks like. So if you look in here, um, I'm just going to click on one of these and see what happens. Yeah, so these are different color schemes. I probably just clicked on them and looked at them all until I found something I liked. Here is your font for Chinese. I installed this font at the recommendation... Um, at someone else's recommendation, the Kai T font. It looks really nice. It's this font right here. Um, it's got a kind of a kind of a calligraphy flair to it, and it's also easy on the eyes, and it doesn't look robotic. And then English, it's just Arial, which, you know, it's whatever. English can have whatever font it wants. Um, and then this is, oh, yeah. So this is the size of the characters. Uh, so we can change this. So I have it at size 36, but I can make it smaller. And then look, the whole input window gets smaller. But it's just kind of nice to have them big. And so this alone is also worth the price of admission. Because this, again, especially if you're new to Chinese, you can't change the size of the characters in this input box without changing the size of everything on your computer and feeling like you're someone's grandparent. If you are someone's grandparent, welcome to the channel. I'm so glad that you're studying Chinese. You should always just spend your life learning. And maybe you won't have that problem in the first place because your computer's already way zoomed in. Who knows? Anyways, so this settings menu is huge. Now, don't be intimidated. It's all Chinese characters, and I haven't found a way to switch this to English, but, like, don't worry about it. You're here to study Chinese, and so it's worth whipping out your phone, taking some pictures of these things, translating them, and figuring them out. Or just queue up this video and watch me do all this action again. So anyways, um, that's what makes this keyboard so great. And I think that's about it. Let me let me show you again the difference between vertical and horizontal character options. So like I typed in this super long sentence and it's like here's an option, which is what you typed. Here's some shortened versions you can select. I'll just pick one. Uh, but notice does it feel cramped? Does it feel like the space is running out? Not really. You get all kinds of room for this one, and you still have room for a bunch of selections. I'm going to hit one. Now let's do the exact same thing on the Microsoft keyboard. Uh, yeah, that's that one. 
去美国，呃，加州看不同的山。Okay, so it's actually still giving me a decent number of secondary options, so that's not too much of a difference. But notice again, the text is a lot smaller, the font's a lot more stiff, and you can't change anything about this without changing your entire computer. So, and again, at any time, if I bump Control Space, bamo, I am in English mode, and especially if I type it in the middle of something like wash, guarantee. 换吃饭 and then all of a sudden I accidentally bump Control Space because I'm going a mile a minute. Bamo! It just dumps all these letters out, and I'm like, "Wow! I wanted characters, not letters, you fool!" So, anyways,、um, that is why I have Sogo installed, and I'll show you really quick how to find it. So, if you open up a web browser, if you're a wild, crazy rebel who doesn't want to. Conform to the pack. Get yourself some Firefox. S O G O U. Which, if you've already studied some Chinese,、um, the characters for that mean search dog.、Um, which sounds funny until you think about how Microsoft had an assistant that was a dog for a while. So go.、Um, and this is the company that makes this input editor. So you can just Google So Go Chinese I M E. And then let's see if we can get. Well, that's a little harder than I expected it to be. Let's try Sogo Chinese keyboard. We're learning together. Sogo Pinion. That's probably what you want to do. My internet's slow, but don't let that discourage you. Anyways, this should load someday. There we go, and so that's the program I was just now using, and you can, I guess, scan a little QR code to. I don't know why in the world you would scan a QR code while on a computer, but, anyways,、uh, let's see. You know what? I'll I'll find the download link and I'll I'll put it in the description because. Let's see. Is this this it? Xin Pian. That's why you're watching the video, isn't it? Oh, those are new features for eleven point nine, but like, where's download? Where is the download button, anyways?、Um, can't find the download button, which feels embarrassing. All right, well, I'll, I'll find, a, I'll include a link when I find one. But anyways, that's what you want to Google is the Sogo, and if you're luckier than me, you'll find a download button. Maybe your web page will even render correctly. That's it for now.